Hey, yeah. Uh, what did you unplug to plug in that um, vacuum cleaner? Does it need to be plugged back in? It was your um, Dyson. Oh, how come the light was still on the Dyson? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe I unplugged the freezer instead. Whatever. Do I just... Yeah, just swap back. Um, just check that the green light is on the freezer down the bottom right. I think, oh, I think the green light is. That's what I don't understand. There's a green light and a blue light. So I'm like, what did you unplug? <laughs> it's a mystery. Ah, she's... Oh, Luna, out you go. Yeah, I really... It's a conundrum. Hmm. Like, it, it might be just residual power going through on the Dyson. That's all. Alright. Okay. Let's get started. Shift some windows around. Okay. Yes, it's a uh, bit of a late stream. I've been busy tearing down the a kitchen wall and I've just finished cleaning up most of that mess. We have a new fridge turning up tomorrow and we kind of had to clear the way for it to even fit. So that was fun. We've been waiting since uh, early December, actually late November, for this fridge. Finally, it actually turned up. Getting to the point where we were thinking we'd just have to give up and find another supplier for the fridge. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, 1707. It looks like it's got some corrosion up here, so maybe we'll be lucky, and this is just going to be a, I don't know, short of cap, but... Hopefully the data remains intact. That's the main trick. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I think this is a 291 board, I think. 291. Oops, I just realized my other camera is not even on. Very special fridge. No, not really. It's just a fridge that works and doesn't consume a million kilowatt hour a day. Uh, 281. Duh. Of course. I'm just going to update the specs. Let's see, is this 233? Board ID 820 00 0281. Update. And rescan. Beep. Wonderful. It's nice when my software actually works. One day, I hope Lewis Rossman experiences that too. And then he might actually start being nice to me. Alright, so we're just going to take this out. Like I said, it, it has signs that there's going to be corrosion around. It's got the classic sort of dust build up on the intake vents, that sort of stuff. So it's somewhat preempted here. That we're going to have a corroded cap or something like that. What time is it here? It's uh, 11.30 in the evening. Hey Marcel, had to wash, change your washing machine two weeks back. It lasted 15 years. Well, they used to last that long. I mean, that was the thing, you yeah. know. But now, they seem to drop dead in eight to, well, five to eight years. Typically, they just seem to drop dead. Maybe we're just not paying enough for them. Maybe instead of paying $900 for a washing machine, we should be paying $1,500. I don't know. The quality, the price quality ratio seems to be difficult to determine. Uh, Travis, Lewis being nice. What? Lewis being nice is him berating you because the board shows up sideways. Oh yeah, well, not my fault he can't work out how to use things properly. And as it is, there are certainly times when the board is in fact sideways. That was a sad case of... I created a feature in the software where it would look at the aspect ratio of the window and then it would look at the aspect ratio of the board and it would fit the board to the aspect ratio um, as in it would pick the aspect ratio that matched the one for the board to the screen and that is why it would show up 
orientated vertically like that. Hey Jason, sorry it's so late there Jason. It's been a very busy day, during the day I had enough things to do and then um, yeah, like I said, tearing down kitchen walls is not really a quick process. It's a lot of mess, There's a lot of stuffing around, a lot of noise too. It did get it down. Hey, Sivlop. Fortunately, these boards are not as bad as things like the O1700s. These ones actually have a reasonable chance of survival. I've already had to deal with a pair of 1700s today, and they were both duds. Which was no great surprise. I'd already pre-warned the people when they sent them in. I said, look, it's going to be about a 95% chance it's a dud, but I'm happy to have a look at it. I'm happy to get you back to 20 volts and but I can pretty much tell you outright that in most cases it's going to be a dead dead data hey creature good evening to you or good day to you what was the washing machine talk? Oh, that was someone else talking about the washing machine I was previously talking about a new fridge that we're getting our existing fridge I think is about 16 years old and it stopped being useful around about 10 years ago. Um, it was a Westinghouse double door combined... I'm really not a fan of the side-by-side -side combined units but it seems to be the only way to get some decent space here other than going for a pigeon pair. Pigeon pairs are definitely my preferred but you need a pretty big area to get a pigeon pair to sit nicely in the house and as big as this place is it is not actually big enough to handle a pigeon pair oh yeah Westinghouse is sold down here anyway so ours started to misbehave fairly early on this one had the classic um, the uh, baffle between the freezer side and the fridge side the servo drive in that would die and you'd hear it just going tick 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 because it had broken off a couple of teeth and it would never get to the destination point that it was trying to get to yeah so I fixed that up and then yeah a few other problems came up the doors started to uh, drift downwards because and then the full upright handle for the fridge side broke clean off yeah, it was just frustrating interesting there's a sticker here WW2 hmm weird <sighs> pigeon pair fridge in kitchen freezer laundry oh ok yeah, that's, that's another way if you can do it yeah we have a chest freezer in our um, other room, so that kind of complements things. Anyway, so we've got a new LG being delivered hopefully tomorrow. Might have to blindfold the people who deliver it though, because they take one look at our kitchen and they'll be horrified. We're getting it renovated, it's just a case of we needed the fridge before we got around to renovate in the kitchen. We've got the tiles for the kitchen and we've already ripped out all the cabinets and everything but we needed a fridge. Pronto. Okay, top side looks pretty healthy. Thankfully no damage on the CPU or GPU stuff. That was another one I had to deal with today. Unfortunately, a whole bunch of junk got onto the GPU and CPU section, leaving the CPU in a kind of a weird state. It will actually bong when I plug power in, but the CPU is pretty much dead. So it's got enough life in it that it'll go bong, 
but that's about it. Okay, so we've got a bunch of junk here. It looks pretty nondescript. Yeah, one of these might be sure, but we are getting 20 volts supposedly. So I'm just going to check the other side. Might be something worse. Well, that's some seriously gnarly surface corrosion, but not really killer corrosion as yet. Mm, whatever this is going to be, it's possibly going to be a subtle fault, and that's kind of going to suck. Now, Creature, I really actually don't know. All I know is that I may get the bong, but it just does not come to life. I get no other activity other than that. Okay, so the temperature sensor here is a little bit beaten up. You may recognize this sort of area from the other day. We had a device that we were trying to get back to life. It's a pretty common sort of hit zone, as it were. I mean, that's a bit of bad corrosion there, but I don't know if that's going to actually be a critical area. I'm not sure if I can consider that a critical strike. Well, have a look at the shield later. Normally it isn't a problem under there. I'll check the... See if that's shorted. I'd be surprised if I was getting 20 volts and that was shorted there. Yeah, it doesn't feel shorted. I'll check my PP bus. Maybe. It could be one of the caps gave up. It could be all the corrosion is just a red herring. Wouldn't be the first time. Okay, let's see what our PP bus. Nah, that's over a K, so we're, we're okay there. Mm. Alrighty. Time for me to plug it in and just verify some things. If nothing else. Um, oh, the 1502 is still booting and behaving, so another couple of days, and I might be moderately considering letting it out. What have we got? Goes to 20 volts and smack bang on zero, so we've got a short somewhere. Something shorted. Something shattered on the circuit board. Who are you gonna call? Infrared camera. Da, 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 da. I ain't afraid of no short. It's probably not gonna be a short. Hey, Paul T. Ah, Jimbo got the good, the mix, the good mix up there. Good old A-team. Creature, bite me. Still a lot better than alcohol only, or using your lip. Tell you what, creature, you can send me one. How's that sound? Seems like a fair deal to me. You send me one, and I'll use it. As long as it works with Linux. I don't know why I'm wearing my glasses. That's a dumb move. I'm fairly sure... Well, I have, I shouldn't say fairly sure. 
I have reasonable confidence it is a kind of a short, or a short, but I don't know. Okay, we found it, I think. Yeah, that's it there, right there. Yep. See how it pulses periodically? Put it back down, it should flick back to it, yeah. yeah. That's definitely our point. Did you get the laptop for the damage wires fixed? I did, I did, I did. Oh yeah, I used the liquid, um, I did the whole liquid tape thing. I received some liquid tape today. Thanks for reminding me. This is from Paul T, or Paul Tadic. This is the good old electrical liquid tape, complete with MEK. Delicious, delicious MEK, by the way. Don't um, sniff MEK, but it's really hard not to because it just smells so good but um ah but yeah this is it's kind of like some you, know, you have like plasti dip oh yeah that i don't know how to describe the smell it's um sweet but solvent yeah, it's difficult to describe okay well we can do a plasti dip example of it. I just need to find something that's worth plasti dipping. There is actually a sub uh, a liquid tape type thing and it's called plasti dip, but uh, I think it has a higher viscosity than liquid tape. Yeah, sweet brain damage. I mean, that's the joy of MEK. It's hard to resist it. It does come with a brush, but I'm not really... I never use the brush. Anyway, so if you just dip your stuff into it, and let it dry... Oh no, now I've spilled it on the outside. What have I done? Okay, it's getting to the point now where it's... Uh, unfortunately, I've spilled it. Thankfully, at least, this particular batch is actually fresh. And was not a solid lump. Uh, because so often you get it and it just... It's a solid lump before too long. Yeah, we're just going to... The tweezers are perhaps a little bit fine to plastic dip it, but you know, I'm going to put them aside and we'll have a look at that in a little bit. I want to get that short before I forget where it was. Damn it. I'm trying to find a place to put this. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Can it be used for chip underpill? Not a good idea. <laughs> Okay. Yay, I can see it straight away. There it is there. Put it in the fridge with silicon and glue, super glue so it does not harm. Oh, right in the fridge. Yeah, I need to get one of those for the room. Beep. Right. We'll just get rid of that. I also, of course, don't recommend using that stuff as a overfill, like UV cure or anything like that. Because yeah, if you if you reheat that with the hot air, you're probably going to wreck your lungs in short order. Strong 
strongly discourage that sort of idiocracy. All right, here we go. After we've removed it, we'll have a look at what actual circuit that was on, what net. Is it like rubber? Yes, it's um, yeah, it, it's got a rubbery consistency when it's dried. Well, this is another one that doesn't actually have any sort of massive visual damage on it. I mean, okay, there's there's a little bit of corrosion on the end cap, but aside from that, there's it's not shattered. It doesn't have any little metal baubles coming out of it or anything like that. It's just it's just a bit corroded on the edge, and that's it. Sometimes you get them like that. Yeah, it's not stretchy, but it is. It's um, it's kind of like vinyl with a little bit more flexibility in it. Okay, so here we go. Five twenty. One point three amps. 1.3, that's actually a lot more than it should be. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to have a look at schematic. Yeah, 1.3 is a little more than I would expect for this board. But then, maybe I've just forgotten. Okay, 3v3s4, power management unit. Ah, uh, Berkelium. Okay, so it's a decoupler for Berkelium. What is it? VDD main. Oh, it's part of the buck. Okay, so we're probably going to need to put that back. And this is one of these frustrating caps that they have. It's a 15 microfarad, 63402. That... I can get off an iPhone 6, I'm fairly sure. So 15, 63402. iPhone 6, usually in the NAND region, I think. There we go. Yay! Nice when your memory actually works. Any new rescues? Nothing currently, if you're talking about cats. We're pretty much just trying to rescue ourselves at the moment. By the way, if the um, screen colour looks a little um, warm rather than a little bit whiter, uh, hotter, uh, not water, uh, cooler, it's because I... Uh, my... Um, Two of my lamps fell down from the ceiling today, so <laughs> I'm missing about 30 watts of light. Okay, what have we got? I found six. Looks like I've kind of s taken some from there already. Probably from that too. Maybe not that one. Um, yeah, I'll have a look when I play it back to see whether it's representative of what I really am watching, what I really can see here. Because the monitor I have for showing what OBS is doing is not a very good monitor. It, um, it doesn't have a good representation of what you should see on your screens.
I guess I should actually see which ones do have those caps still there because I tend to steal them quite a lot. Yeah, you can see I've nicked all those ones. Okay, this is still this still has most of them because it's an it's an unusual cap, 15 microfarad. So yeah, I was pretty happy to see that the iPhone 6 had them. So 614, so that one there should be the one we're after. See how those tweezer tips are going. But still a little bit, it's, you're not supposed to apply it quite as thick as this. I would give this maybe another half hour. Yeah, you're supposed to do thin coats and then you know, recoat if you have to but you get an idea of it you can see with the thin coating it provides you a nice well that's pretty cool yeah like that so it's like I said it's kind of like a vinyl plastic coating but slightly more rubbery All right, let's get this cap. Good reason to keep an excess of iPhone 6s around. Right, we need to actually dig that out slightly, so we'll get the Reaper out. Hey, Toby. Yeah, B black. It's similar to Tool Dip. This one's the Starbright liquid tape, so I think they. It's slightly more, um, slightly less viscous than Tool Dip. I think Tool Dip can take a, produce a thicker layer on the first dip. But I think fundamentally it's the same substance. Uh, Marcel, you might be, unless it's just your system. If you're running 60 frames per second, I'm running 50 frames per second, so there could be a syncing issue. Naturally, I forgot to prepare the pads. Naturally, I don't learn to solder properly. There we go. Yep, that's a that's a genuine cluster. Patrick, good evening to you. Alright, well, we do have other bits I probably want to clean up first before I go too much further. Yeah, there's bits of corrosion that probably wouldn't hurt to be cleaned up. Yikes, sorry. Like all this garbage up here. Let's certainly give it a brush down, if nothing else, just to see if there's anything that we can spot. Like that there. See, there's a bit of green corrosion happening down there. And 
and we've got corrosion happening here so it's a case of okay we found a short we fixed the short that's great but there's still quite a bit of other stuff happening that we need to sort out so first thing I'm going to do is see if I can fix that up fortunately it's not an underfilled CD3215 so we can just lift that resistor up check the pads put it back down might do that with that, those caps too Yeah, unfortunately there's not much I can do about the whole 50-60 thing. I mean, I suppose I could change it so my system generates 60. But the thing is, all of my video devices are 50. And particularly with the overhead camera and the um, face camera, they're all... I'm going to try a new tip. Where are you? Tip. I got this the other day. Let's see how that goes. Fortunately, I have a spare handle. I am outputting as 1080, uh, sorry, 1050. Yeah, 1080, 50. Yeah, that is what I'm generating to YouTube. So it's actually not my side that's the issue, it's YouTube kind of not quite signaling right to other people about it being 50. To be fair, I actually don't really know how they resolve that issue. I don't know whether they just progressively scan... Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'll find this as useful as the KN, but I'm just willing to try it out for the moment. Of course, applying it onto ground pads is a bad start. corrosion there in general there's just a lot of low level corrosion around here and it probably will get picked up by the ultrasonic I guess we sort of want to be sure of that I think this tip is actually more useful for iPhones than it is for MacBooks I've never been a great fan of the conical tip, like no matter what, even big old irons, new irons, whatever, the conical tip just seems to be a tip with no real 
true purpose, general purpose, it's kind of like, okay, if you want to dab a couple of bits of solder down on a pad, great. But otherwise, I've always found them a bit of a, a lost purpose tip. Still, we'll give it a trial. I'm just trying to get the corrosion off the end caps on these little resi uh, capacitors. Let's give it some assistance here. Pretty sure Jason Vilma uses that tip. have to emulate my heroes. Hi Branches. Hi Pedro. Ah, uh, see Pedro is also a Jason Vilma follower. I think the great thing about Jason Vilma with his videos is you never know what you're going to get from him. Yeah, it could be just a pretty straightforward, ordinary, you know, normal repair video. Or it could be some crazy-ass thing that you just weren't expecting. It keeps it entertaining. I just wish you would produce more videos, in all honesty. Oh yeah, the lightning strike one, yep. Yeah. Right between the crotch. Using the tip for something that was not designed for scraping stuff. Yeah, I can see it would be useful for doing the individual pins on connectors. I think with Jessa, she's pretty much got her hands full with the business side of things these days. I see she's doing another... Uh, She's hosting another MacBook repair session with Tim Herman, so it's good that they're doing that. It's like, yeah, a lot of people are used to Jessa doing the iPhone microelectronics repairs, so the Tim Herman coming along and doing the MacBook side of things, that's, it's a good combination. And of course, you know, people are used to Jessa, you know, when they think, oh, training, you know, it's uh, Jessa. And so when Tim brings in the MacBook side of it, then you may get a bunch of people who already did the iPhone one coming over for the Mac one. It's smart thinking. Which is why I didn't think of it. What kind of interface would be ideal for a thermal camera on your bench? Um, serial? I mean, seriously, it's like there's not that much data that has to be shifted nine times a second. You could easily do that on a standard serial interface, 115k bit, surely. 
That's, that's the thing that frustrates me with a lot of the thermal cameras. It's like they could easily just pump out those values on a plain old TT or digital level serial output or even SPI. And in fact, a few of them do, but when you get them in the commercial packaging, you lose that option. I would like Serial simply so that I can get access to the raw data and then I'm more than happy to process that raw data into imagery, which is what I'm already doing anyway, with the uh, FLIR. And that way I don't have to deal with things like watermarks and restrictions. Alright, well, who knows if this is going to work or not. Mr. Daniel should start MacBook repairs and cat streaming streaming. Uh... Uh, I'm a little bit not human liking to uh, engage in such a thing. What's this creature? I have a module that I may get access to. Oh, 1280 by 1024. Okay, so what the. Um, it's already pre processing the sensor and overlaying something. Or is it pre processing the sensor and then just magnifying it up to an image that size? Because I know I can get like the lepton cores, or I can't remember the name of the one they have. The, I don't know if it's the bow. I don't think it's the boson, and I don't think it's the meson. But FLIR do have a new core out that has a substantially higher um, pixel count again, and it's not too expensive. It's about twelve hundred dollars, I think. And I figured it wouldn't be a bad option to have a look at. And it may have enough pixels in it that you can then do away with the visual interface, uh, the visual camera, and at least then you avoid the whole parallax issue. I mean, as it is, my software will let you adjust that, but if you're moving things around, then that parallax only works for a little while, you know, until you shift it, and then all of a sudden you have to change it again. I suppose I could write some fancy software that will try and detect the initial outline. Once you've aligned them, you can say, keep these two things aligned. But it sounds like more work than it's worth, in my opinion. Raw thermopile. Oh, module for the military scope use. Well, in that case, creature, yeah, okay, I might be interested. But I don't think you'd ever be able to export it to me. As much as Australia is a part of many military oh crikey this has got a popped battery so that's a bad start yeah i have a feeling they will probably not let you send that to me even if you say n nice things i need a privacy filter here before i turn this on Yeah, that resolution, yeah, won't need fusion imaging. I just thought it, you know, I was expecting maybe you would say you had something like a 360 by 240, yeah, yeah, 360 by 240 image on it. But if you're up at that high, that's crazy high. All right, so we're plugged in. We're doing 1.5. We've got a fan spin. And a fan stop. But that's okay, that does happen on these. And we're fan spinning again. Hopefully, it stays on though this time. One amp constant, that's a little more normal. Ah, shite, it stopped again. Okay, that's bad news. It may be wanting the battery. I cannot recall on this model. I sincerely hope it is the battery, because if it's not, it means we've basically got a dead NAND situation. Uh, 
because that's what happens on the 1700s. I'd be curious as to why it would be dead Nand. Okay, that's self-booted. That's interesting. There could be something else forcing it to restart. No, we got a bomb. It just wanted battery. Well, that looks like success to me. Looks like I'm getting chicken dinner. Yep, that's all good. Let's shut that down. Another success. So, one shorted cap that was in the form of a pulsar on an indirect rail. And fortunately, our thermal camera saved us there. Without the thermal camera, you would have had a hard time finding that. Other than going through and checking every single rail, which, as I said, you'd have a hard time. Oh, Creature, you'll have to email me that. Let me know what the costs are. Although I think the cost on that sensor would be a little bit ludicrous, which is why I'm looking at the the version up from the leptin and the FLIR, because at least I can afford that. And it is something I'd be able to do over I2C or um, Serial. Yeah, it's within the realm of my limited capabilities as a developer. La la la... Okay, I suppose I better write down what I did before I forget. Hey Tony, hey Greg, hey Pachumba, just saw you there, sorry about that. Alright, time to document this. Yeah, apparently I've got to do that. Okay, so this was a short on C4206. Pardon me, C4206 shorted, replaced, various corrosion damage down left and right side of board undersides, flux cleaned, this will definitely have to go through an ultrasonic clean, I don't really really like ultrasonic cleaning too many of these boards but these ones aren't too too bad boots to user login That's it. so you got your 32240 pure no fusion so 640 480 be enough um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I'd be more than happy with 320 or 640, to be honest, Creature. Because this one's a 120 by, um, was it? Oh, no, this is a, I think it's a 160 by 120. Yeah, this is a 160 by 120, this one. So, to get double the resolution, that would be pretty good, particularly if... I, it maintains the same sensitivity on the sensor because I do rely on the fact that I can pick up heat from you know, down around about you know, the 125 milliwatt region. So if I can keep that and get a higher resolution, that's a little, a little more useful. Ah oh, man, I am running out of slots yet again. What have we got? 1701. Look. Okay, I am going to double stack you because you are to the same company. This is the one that I did last night where I realized I'd left the stupid latch up. That was a very dumb mistake. Uh, what have I got? I got another 1707. I'm going to take that because I'm a little fearful of picking up any 9. 1990s at the moment or 2159s so I'll take a 1707 any day normal sensitivity is 70 millikelvin yeah that's that's what I'm used to at the moment 
So if anything is good or better than that, I'm happy with. Okay, I've got to disassemble this one off screen. <laughs> 2159s are harmless. I wish they were. Well, they are for the fact that they're killed dead. And they're just sort of like a black hole for all hope and dreams. Come on now. Oh, man. Some 1707s can be a little bit reluctant to open up. Yeah. <sighs> That hex nut, yeah. Ow. Oh, this is another failed battery one. That's probably why this one's actually in... F I know they did not open this up, but it's going to have the same issue. As in, we've got all this fluff going on down here. And that's what causes the corrosion. The question is just, where is the corrosion? And what have we got this time? Well, it's not a 281 this time. Okay, it's just here. I can't read it. It's a 928. 12.40, 9.28. Eight two zero double not too late. <coughs> mm. Yep, don't die, Paul. Don't die. Not today. Okay, resynchronize. Beep. Beep. Okay. So what is the fault? Started coming up software error on boot, thought it might have been caused by touch bar, hardware failure, saying replace logic. Okay, that's, that's. Clearly no one's opened this because the first thing they would have said is, well, the battery needs replacing because the airbags are deployed. This board has to come out because there will be corrosion on the underside. No question about it. Can I let's see? Can I adapt my FLIR Gen 3 USB C to my Mac directly instead of. Probably not. The problem is that um, while you could plug it in, the Mac won't know what to do with it in terms of. It'll be like, well, I can see there's a device, but I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, and of course, there's no drivers for it. The only reason why I got the FLIR 1 Pro working on Linux is because, well, Linux is fairly... It's like, go at it. If you want to access the data off that thing, that's up to you. We might not know how to do it, but if you think you can, you do it. Unless, of course, you can screencast from your Samsung phone. Maybe that's a way. Pedro. Don't be that kind of person. I will take away all MacBook repair privileges from you and the ability to run your little scam system and see how you feel about that. I mean, sitting around twiddling your thumbs, resorting to having to fix $299 plastic PCs and people screaming at you going, why can't you fix it? It's brand new. It's only six years old. What do you mean it's going to cost more to fix it than it's worth? I paid $299 for that. That's a good computer. Now, if you want to live that life, then you keep walking down that path you're on now. Hell, even $1,000 PC laptops are such a pain still. 
Especially that a lot of them were like, I want to be like a Mac too. And, yeah. If you're lucky, they go for a bit of a metal chassis or something like that. And they have nice torque screws on the underside. And when you take the plate away, you can see the main board. But then it rapidly degenerates to being just yet another PC board with weird quirks. And you can't find a board viewer schematic for it. That was a little in depth. I, I've thought about these things. Yeah. You got to put effort into insulting your audience. To be fair, I'm merely, of course, drawing from personal experience when it comes to PC laptops. Because prior to doing MacBooks, I did a lot of PC laptops. So. And there was a couple that I was quite proud of. I remember a, a Dell that I fixed up and I had to basically bore a hole through the board to get access to a GPU signal pin on the other side. And somehow or another, without a board view, I did have schematics, but didn't have a board view. Somehow or another, I managed to actually fix that. And that was just like, wow. No way I could do that now. But back then, I seemed to have some brain cells that did a good job. Slightly disinclined to send this back to the shop with that battery like that. It's the sort of thing you can get into trouble for. Australia Post will be like, or well, the courier will be like, hmm, our truck caught on fire and everything was lost. And it seemed to start from this package from Paul Daniels. It's why they get you to sign things on the package saying, I hereby declare that there are no substances in this package that are flammable or otherwise <laughs> dangerous and you just go oh yeah sure no problem really living on the hope that if it does go up in flames it's going to be so bad that there's no way they're going to know whose package was at fault Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is the dust, oh wow, that's so bad that I can see it from here. Same area, that's complete, that is a complete and total, that's a one hour, two hour job, that one, it's really bad. It's so bad, I think I might not actually do this one tonight because, yeah, I mean, look at that. That's, that's like every part has to be replaced there. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I mean, okay, Apple was right. The board needs replacing, but oh my goodness, that's bad. So bad. What about the other side? I mean, if, if the Irish found this, they'd probably call it St. Patrick. It's got so much green on it. Okay, fortunately, the CDs are okay. I'm going to turn on the extractor. Yeah, this has been inundated by LGMs. I'm not even sure what this substance was to cause this. 
It's some sort of liquid damage. It's not just atmospherical damage. It's definitely liquid damage. But certainly, yeah, that, 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 that. Probably that. This might not need it, but all of those are going to be replaced. That's going to be replaced. That's got to go. This is. This is. Um, well, that's got to go. This is to balance up the fact that the previous job we just did didn't take as long as normal. Guess we can't have it both ways, eh? Well, I mean, I am used to the dust holding on, but this, whatever this liquid is, it's actually slightly greasy. It's not just dust-borne corrosion, because I, you know, do get that quite a lot. But this is, you can see there's that, like, greasy residue there. Now, uh, this is something slightly acidic. It's not just dust. Let's have a look at the rest of the board. Yeah, because like you've got dust here, and there's no problems there. Funnily enough, the dust on the other side with the big shield, that was more your normal um, dust collects atmospheric moisture and then condenses tight corrosion. So this here, this is more your atmospherical type stuff. There is actually a little bit of the slime on it though, I must admit. So I don't know. It's a new terrifying substance. Karma? It's not like I did anything. I fixed the other one. That's how am I being subjected to karma? Thankfully, the CPU area is all good. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, folks, but given the time currently, which is half past twelve. Hey, look at that, that same cap that we just replaced on the other one. I wonder if that's shorted. I'd be very surprised if it was, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be the same cap. Yeah, that one's not shorted, but it probably will get there. So it's the sort of thing that I will replace in due process. So yeah, I think I'm going to be leaving this one for tomorrow. And I've got to work fast tomorrow because I do have another batch of five or six machines coming in and I don't want my turnaround time to get too long. Yeah. Yep. That's a tomorrow job. But at least we know what probably is causing, let's see, may have been caused by touchware hardware failure. Yeah, I don't think so. More like maybe caused by alien ectoplasm snot everywhere. It was an exciting one. And of course the battery. Maybe it's actually... Which side is that given the... Mm, no. I had a theory for a moment, maybe one of the cells had vented and then the just the vapor from the cells because if you do rupture these cells the electrolyte that's in them does have that similar sort of consistency as what I'm seeing on there but it's not that so uh, um, yeah I think that pretty much does me for this evening I'm sorry I know you perhaps wanted a bit of a longer stream but I do have my real life to attend to, and since 
I'm a human. I do have to actually you know, kick back, get some sleep, play some zombies or play some extreme gas guzzlers and then head off to sleep. All right, I'm out of here. You'll take care. I'll see you probably tomorrow. Until then, catch you later.